Acer Aspire VX15 VX5591G. It was time for us to turn our heads to a more affordable gaming solution and Acer is one of the first to offer such a laptop. You can check the price in the description of this video. For the lid, Acer decided to use plastic that resembles brushed aluminum. Fingerprints are going to stick like a magnet on it and even the interior. That could be an issue for some. The logo in the middle and the two red stripes on the sides resemble the Predator 15s and 17s design, with the main difference that they are not illuminated but still give the laptop a sleek and cool look. As far as the hinge design is concerned, we must admit that we're pretty surprised. Usually Acer's laptops rely on a double hinge setup but the VX15 supports only one big hinge with a V-shaped bottom chin on the screen. The bottom piece of the device offers two grills for the stereo loudspeakers while the cooling fans and the heat pipes receive dedicated vent openings for extra airflow. Subjectively, the only irritating part of the design are the side's impractical port placements. Almost all ports are stuck on the right side where cables might obstruct normal usage of an external mouse. The backside features two big vent openings for the cooling system that look quite stylish and appear to be efficient as well. They are painted in red and stand out giving the machine a more distinct look. The interior is also made of plastic but it's quite different from the one used for the lid and base. It's silky smooth and nice to touch. The keyboard offers decent key travel while requiring a little bit more force in the beginning of the travel. Keys feel clicky with good tactile feedback but question the effectiveness of this approach during gameplay. The touchpad's surface may not be best for precise movements and gliding but it's accurate and responsive enough. You can definitely get some work done without resorting to an external mouse. The Acer Aspire VX15 VX5591G features a full HD 15.6 inch TN panel. The viewing angles are narrow due to the nature of TN panels. We measured the maximum brightness of the display to be just 183 nits in the middle and 182 as average across the surface, which means that it is optimal for lightly dimmed indoor use but not as much for outdoor use. The color temperature is 6500 Kelvin and perfectly aligns with the standard. This means that the color deviation across the surface is pretty negligible. During testing, we determined that the display covers just 50% of the sRGB gamut, which means that half of the colors on your screen will be missing. We develop unique profiles tailored for each individual laptop and we'll show you just how easy they could be purchased and used to enhance your viewing ability. We recommend you the profile so you would have a better usage of your laptop. Firstly, for working with Photoshop, CorelDRAW or just overall usage of the laptop, we'd recommend you the Office Work Web Design Profile that will maximize the VX5591G's color accuracy. You can see main and additional colors inside the sRGB gamut pre and post calibration. The Office Work Web Design Profile has been created with a target color temperature equal to 6500 Kelvin, 140 nits luminance and a gamma set to 2.2. We tested the accuracy of the display with 24 commonly used colors. You can check out the results at factory conditions and also with the Office Work Web Design Profile. The next figure shows how well the display is able to reproduce really dark parts of an image, which is essential when watching movies or playing games in low ambient light. The left side of the image represents the display with stock settings, while the right one is the one with the gaming and movie nights profile, which upon activation will make your gaming experience better. More information about the display profiles can be found in the description below. You can easily check for yourself how your display handles the darkest nuances. One of the most important things for proper gamers in a machine is the screen's response time. We recorded the fall time plus rise time of 14 milliseconds. Those are amazing results for this TN panel which makes it twice as fast as some IPS alternatives. Unfortunately the panel uses PWM for regulating screen brightness which is missing only at 100% which could be a strain on the user's eyes. However you can use our health guard profile that will completely eliminate the screen flickering and will also reduce the harmful blue light emissions while keeping the colors of the screen perceptually accurate. If you are not familiar with the harm from blue light emissions, you can learn more about it in our specialized article that I will link in the top right corner of this video. The other two profiles will improve visibility while gaming or watching movies and enhance color accuracy. Again, the purchase link of all of our profiles can be found in the description of this video. For storage upgrade options we reviewed the base configuration with no M2 SSD installed, but we found that the connector supports three different sizes. As you can see from the image, there is room for the standard 2280 stick, 2260 or 2242. 
Also, we tried out the M2 PCIe NVMe SSD, but the system wasn't able to recognize it. The motherboard can hold up to 32GB of DDR4 RAM, but our unit came with one 8GB DDR4 Micron chip, while the other slot was free. The Intel Core i7-7700HQ is the Kaby Lake successor of the super popular Core i7-6700HQ Skylake, used in almost any high-end notebook on the market now. We compared the VX5591G with other notebooks with the same CPU. You can check the full review and more information about this CPU in the Laptop Media website. The GeForce GTX 1050 GPU for laptops is part of the latest NVIDIA Pascal lineup of GPUs, featuring a brand new architecture design. Since the GTX 1050 is quite dependent on the cooling design, its performance may vary. Anyway, the GPU operates at relatively high frequencies, 1354 to 1493 MHz, but incorporates the same amount of 640 CUDA cores, while the memory is clocked at 7000 MHz. These specs ensure high performance boost over the previous generation of Maxwell GPUs. Fortunately, the GTX 1050 equipped notebook supports NVIDIA's Optimus feature for switchable graphics and the battery life appears to be slightly above average for a gaming laptop at this price range. The 52Wh battery unit is sufficient enough to support the Core i7-7700HQ with its integrated Intel HD 630 graphics for long periods of time during web browsing and video playback. For every choose and web browsing it withstands for around 6 hours and 15 minutes. It's quite unlikely that you will start a gaming session without being close to a power source, but deciding so, the laptop will provide you with roughly an hour and 51 minutes of playtime. During the extensive temperature test, temperatures rose slightly, so the CPU had to return to its base operating frequency of 2.8 GHz, so it can give enough headroom for the discrete GPU to perform. Speaking of which, we were surprised by the relatively low operating temperature of the GTX 1050, at 69 degrees Celsius while maintaining a way above normal operating frequency of 1683 MHz. While the inner temperatures of the CPU and GPU were with normal bounds, we were surprised to see the surface around the keyboard getting warm, or in this case, hot. The wrist rest area was cool enough not to cause any discomfort but the center and upper center of the keyboard reached 50 degrees Celsius. We doubt that these temperatures will be the same during gaming but these parts will remain warm during normal use. As a final summation the new Acer Aspire VX15 VX5591G is all about performance. Packing up the latest generation Pascal GPU and Intel 7th generation KB Lake processors. Even from a design standpoint, the chassis appears to be sturdy, well-built and doesn't go too far from what the industry offers right now.